tutorial video, you will learn how to file suspicious transaction reports and currency transaction reports on GoAML interface. An SDR or suspicious transaction report is filed for a transaction or activity falling under the suspicion of money laundering, terrorism financing, proliferation financing, and predicate offenses. A CTR or currency transaction report is filed for any cash transaction of 2 million rupees or above. The GoAML interface provides two ways to file a report. The first involves uploading an XML report based on GoAML schema. However, before uploading an XML report, it is always advisable to validate the XML file on the XML report validator. To do so, go to New Reports in the main menu and click XML Report Validator. The latest version of GoAML schema can also be downloaded from this section. Paste your XML report in the text field and click the Validate button. Any errors in your report are listed underneath the Validate button. Resolve the errors and validate it again until you get the message validation succeeded. Please note that you can upload a plain XML file or zip it before uploading. To upload an XML report, go to New Reports and click XML Upload. Click the Browse button and select the file. Afterwards, you can also select Attachments of the report. In case you are filing an SDR, attaching relevant documents is mandatory. However, no attachment is required if an XML file of a CTR is selected. Finally, click the Upload Report File button and you are done. Another way to file a report through GoAML is by manually creating a web report. To create a web report, go to New Reports tab and click Web Reports. The four report types you can create are CTR or Currency Transaction Reports, CTRA or Currency Transaction Report, Aggregate, STRA or Suspicious Transaction Report Activity and STRF or Suspicious Transaction Report Financial. Please select the report type very carefully as you will not be able to change it after a report is created. A CTR is required to be filed by all the reporting entities when a cash transaction of 2 million rupees or above is conducted, while a CTRA is filed by exchange companies to report transactions involving multiple currencies. Further, an STRF must be filed when the suspicion is based on the financial activity of a customer or client, while STRA is reported when the nature of suspicion is non financial. For example, the person is listed on fourth schedule or on the basis of the availability of adverse media, including attempted transactions. However, if a reporting entity has both suspicions of STRA and STRF in a particular case, an STRF should be filed. Select the report type you want to create from the drop-down field and click the Create Report button. A report ID will be assigned automatically to the report. Remember that fields marked with an asterisk on the form are mandatory. Every report is divided into four sections, which includes report cover, attachments, indicators, transactions, or activity. For any report type, you will be able to enter a reporting entity reference number for your organization's internal use. For an STR cover, you will have to fill out a reason field explaining why you find the reported transactions or activities suspicious and an action field describing any actions taken by the entity such as freezing of account, information shared with law enforcement agency. Clicking the Attachments tab will show the Attachments upload screen. New attachments can be uploaded by clicking the Add button. A pop-up window will appear. Click the Select Files button and select the desired file to upload. The system allows you to attach multiple files. All attachments will be shown in a grid. If the need arises, any attachment can be removed by clicking the delete button. Please note, indicators are mandatory for all types of STRs. You can search an indicator by its code or descriptor from the indicators grid. You can add one or more related indicators to your report. You can add an indicator by putting a check on it or remove an indicator through uncheck that indicator. You can save the report anytime by clicking save report button, though the report has been created at this point. You have to add one or more transactions or parties to it, depending on the type of report or transaction. To add a transaction to your report, Click on Add by Party or Add Multi-Party button. 
A bi-party transaction is based on the concept of flow of funds and involves reporting of both the parties in a transaction from party the originator of funds and to party the beneficiary of funds. A multi-party transaction is created when a linked party needs to be reported in addition to the form and to parties. To create a bi-party transaction, create fields need to be selected appropriately on both from and to sides of the transaction like fund type, country and foreign currency node. A party to a transaction can be an account, a person or an entity and each of these can either be your client or not. Please note, you can also fetch the details of a party by clicking use an existing person, use an existing account and use an existing entity buttons if that party has already been created in the report. To add a party, click on the party type to be created. You can also remove a party from a transaction through the delete button. Any data deleted mistakenly can be recovered through the undo delete option. If the transaction being reported involves goods or services, you can specify the transaction items. You can do that by clicking the plus sign next to goods and services tab and filling out the form which is displayed. You can also upload transactions as an XML file to a report. All such files must be based on the GoAML schema defined for the transactions. To upload an XML transaction, hover over the Transactions tab and click Upload Transactions XML button. Import XML Transactions pop-up window will be displayed. Click the Select Files button to bring up the file browser. You can select multiple transaction XML files and click the Upload button to add the XML transactions to the report. Please note that in a STRA report, only the parties involved in suspicious activity such as persons, accounts and entities are reported. The report pane or bar shows two colors on the sections and subsections of the report. The green color denotes that the section has been filled completely, while the red color indicates that there is an error or missing information in that section. Please note the Submit Report button will not be enabled unless all the sections of the report are green. After you have added all the transactions and parties to a report, you can save all the details and preview it before clicking Submit Report. After a security check, the report is added to the submitted reports on GoAML. The Drafted Reports menu allows you quick access to a list of all non-submitted web reports including reports saved as draft or reports reverted. You can edit, delete or preview these reports anytime. To access these reports, click Drafted Reports on the main menu. Then select Non-Submitted Web Reports. You can search and apply filters to the list like Report Reference, Report Type, Report Status and you can also specify start and end dates of the time span you wish to review. To edit one of these reports, click on the pencil icon in the reports row on extreme right of the page. The report concerned is displayed in the form for editing. The status of the report submitted can be seen from XML reports and web reports in the submitted reports tab. All reports submitted are either processed or rejected. The reason for the rejection of a report can be viewed by clicking the hyperlink status rejected or the acknowledgement sent through the GoAML message board. The rejected reports are then required to be submitted again after resolving the issues highlighted in the reasons for rejections of report. The rejected web reports can also be reverted through the revert button. After clicking the rejected hyperlink, the grids, filters and searching and sorting mechanisms of submitted reports are same as described for the drafted reports. The Reporting Statistics module provides an overview of all the reports submitted on GoAML. The different report types and transactions can be filtered and displayed in a pivot grid by username, report status, reporting entity and agency business type. Apart from reports and transactions, the statistics of user requests can also be seen. Further, the users can also export the results on Pivot and charts on Excel and in PDF. GoAML also provides access to message board to a registered organization. The GoAML message board is an internal and secure communication system which can be used for exchange of messages between FMU and the reporting organization.
It generates automated, instant system messages regarding acceptance or rejection of GoAML reports along with acknowledgements of the reports and communication of guidelines, clarifications, announcements, etc. from FMU's side. To access the message board, click message board on the top navigation bar. Please bear in mind, this is an organization's message board to communicate with FMU and each entity on GoAML has a shared inbox accessible by all authorized users. You will notice that the message board user interface is quite similar to an email interface. The system allows you to receive, send, reply to and archive messages. A message can have a subject line, a body and attachments. You can also flag, search, sort and filter messages in a folder in the message board. Still got questions about reporting on GoAML? Click the help button to access help documentation. If you need further assistance or have any queries about GoAML, please feel free to reach us via goamlhelpdesk at fmu.gov.pk.